are you looking for a great way to remove layer lines from 3D prints? Today we're trying out Incredifield Putty, which is cured with the power of UV light. A popular use of 3D printing is making cosplay, props and models from popular culture. To do this well, you need to remove the layer lines before painting, and when it comes to sanding and finishing, I am really impatient. I just really hate sanding. My patron David mentioned a product new to me, Incredifil from Monocure 3D. It's a putty which is set by UV light and then can be sanded and painted. In this video, you're going to see a test of two things. Firstly, Incredifil, and secondly, my abilities with post-processing with very different results. The product we're testing today is called Incredifil by Monocure 3D, an Australian manufacturer of UV resins. This quick guide sums up very well how it works. We apply it over the top, use UV light to cure or harden it. We can then sand back and finish to remove 3D printer layer lines. On this information page, we have a short video overview showing how it works and giving some tips for best practice. There's also some additional written tips to help you out. As with UV cured 3D printer resin, there are some safety considerations. You should avoid getting it on your skin and it does have an odor, so you have to use it in a well ventilated area. You should also keep in mind that when you're sanding the cured product, it's important not to breathe in the dust. To test this product, I ordered myself the ultimate starter kit, which comes with one tub of putty, a special UV torch, an 18650 cell to power the torch, a charger, some UV protective glasses and three spatulas. The cost of this was 120 Australian dollars, which works out just under 90 US. If you didn't need the other tools or you were buying the putty as a refill, the price is 70 Australian dollars, which is around 50 dollars US. That's the product, so now we need some objects to print. For this video, I let my kids pick an object each that they would like me to produce. Unsurprisingly, my son picked this low poly Boba Fett by Hatsy Flatsy, which is actually printed in two separate pieces with a connector for the neck. My daughter picked something from Harry Potter, Hermione's Wand, the Sturdy Edition, which is remixed by M. Fritz to split the wand into three parts to make it easier to print, again joined with some printed connectors. My printer of choice for these objects is my CR10 Max, which is fitted with a Hamera and a large 0.6mm nozzle that I typically use to print with a 0.4mm layer height. The material I chose was this skin coloured PLA from X3D, which is linked in the description. The finished objects have plenty visible layer lines thanks to the taller layer height than usual, particularly on the shallow surfaces. There's also some other artifacts such as stringing. Overall they're reasonable prints, but there is some work to do. Hermione's wand may not have the stair stepping because there's no shallow surfaces, but there's some obvious loops on the underside of the decorative pattern, and it comes in three pieces, so I will need to join them together and then fill in the seam. To get rid of the stringing, I employed my favourite shortcut of using a torch to quickly melt away the fine strands of filament. This is a fast method, but there are still some bits left over that need tidying up. I used a blade to scrape these off, and I also used a blade to address a tiny bit of elephant's foot that was present on the bottom of the models, as well as some of the more obvious separated plastic loops. The wand had less general tidying up to do, so instead I concentrated on the elephant's foot that would affect the mating surfaces. And once the pieces were able to be fit, I superglued them and the pins in place permanently. As you can see, the seam between the different parts is quite obvious and should prove to be a good test. The Incredifil Ultimate Starter Kit comes packaged in a pretty handy box. Everything is held separately in a vacuum formed base. General directions are included on the underside of the lid. The torch is very solid with a metal housing. UV light is not great for your eyes and I'm pleased to report that the included glasses do a great job of lessening the intensity and making it comfortable to work with the light. The spatulas are pretty basic, but that's all they need to be, and the 18650 charger is nice and compact with a USB charging cord recessed underneath. Like the torch, it feels sturdy and well built. Overall, this box is a nice solution, and I'll be retaining it to store the product in. I was all set, so time to get filling. I'm working on top of a wham bam slap mat, which is quite frankly perfect for this job. And prior to applying any putty, I'm following the recommendations to clean off any oils and debris by wiping the parts down with isopropyl alcohol. The last essential items are some protective gloves. The easiest surfaces to fill will be large and close to flat, but my two models are anything but, 
so these spatulas will be close to useless for this project. After opening the tub, I found that some of the putty had shifted around from transportation. I harvested my first round of putty from inside the lid and focused on pushing it down into the crack where the different parts joined on the wand. I then worked either side of this point to move around the putty and get it to fill in all of the layer line crevices. The viscosity is runny enough that it's easy to move the putty around the object to the locations you're concentrating on. After coating one half of the wand, I put the lid back on top of the putty so I couldn't accidentally cure it and prepared to try out the torch for the first time. I figured the liner from the lid, which only had a little bit of putty remaining, was an excellent place to test how the curing worked. I moved the torch slowly as per the instructions, trying to cover all of the area for a total of around 10 to 15 seconds. One nice feature is that the putty shows up really clearly under the light, so I used this to locate any spills I had on the slap mat and cured them so I couldn't accidentally get them on myself later. I only cured the left hand half, which you can see is set, and the right hand half is still a liquid. Testing complete, time to move to the wand. The 3D printed fractal vise got a bit of love for this project as it's ideal for holding odd shaped objects. Just like with the test cure, I slowly moved the UV torch across the surface of the wand. I got impatient pretty quick, checked the instructions and confirmed that you can cure the putty in direct sunlight, so why not take advantage of that? For the Boba Fett figurine, I switched to a large soft bristle brush. Not only because it gave me more control than my finger in the glove, but also because it was a lot cleaner. For the first pass, I concentrated solely on the jetpack. After doing the most delicate areas with the torch, it was placed outside in the sun next to the wand. With the putty completely cured, it was time to test sanding. And how easy the putty is to sand is actually a very important characteristic. For me, the cured putty was just right. It was stiff enough that you could cut away any really thick sections, although a file would probably be a better tool for this job, but not so stiff that it was impossible to sand. In fact, as soon as I started with the sandpaper, a fine powder, which remember you should absolutely not breathe in, started to come off the wand. It didn't take very long to confirm that the layer lines were more or less gone, and I just needed to do some more sanding to smooth out the overall shape. I used a variety of sanding tools and found that a grit of between 120 to 180 was pretty ideal at this stage. This gave me a similar level of initial success with the jetpack on the Boba Fett model. With the outer surfaces that were quite easy to sand, already missing their layer lines, which remember were quite coarse from the 0.4mm layer height. After vacuuming off the dust from both models, I continued with additional applications of the putty. From this point onwards I only used the paintbrush, as it was just easier and more effective than using my finger under the glove. Although I mainly used the sun to cure the putty, I also experimented with using a resin 3D printer curing chamber, which worked equally as well. Do you remember how I said I hate sanding? Well, I realized pretty quickly that both of the models chosen were going to be quite hard to work on. So my effort in getting them perfectly smooth is not so great. But at least I think I managed to salvage a good result. With each model being as smooth as it's going to get given my limitations with sanding, I applied a few coats of grey primer to each in preparation for further painting. On the wand, despite me, you can see the potential, with the easier to sand sections having zero layer lines visible. Yes, it still could be better, but that's entirely my fault. Further down the wand, there's some bits where I really didn't sand very much, but importantly for me, you could no longer spot the joins between the three separate pieces. After some coats of pale gold metallic spray paint, as per my daughter's wishes, the wand was looking pretty good, but I decided to take things further by introducing a second colour that I would apply with a weathering technique. The idea is that the wand is held by the handle and there should be some grime and signs of use there. So we paint on the secondary colour, but before the paint has a chance to dry, we take some clean paper towel and wipe off about 80% of the paint. So rather than hide the blemishes, we use them to accentuate the wand. And given that it should be a heavily used item made from wood, in my opinion, this effect makes it much more believable. Ultimately, the important thing is it doesn't look like it's already printed and you can't see any layer lines. As for Boba Fett, after priming, all I can say is I really don't like sanding. Again, I have removed the layer lines that were quite obvious on top of the head and there'd be plenty of people with more skill and patience than me that could have got this completely smooth. Despite the texture left behind from my lack of sanding, this model is still entirely salvageable. Enter some Rust-Oleum 
Forge Hammered Paint and Primer. It goes on thick and leaves a texture behind, perfect for hiding all types of mischief. And fortunately, it did the same thing here. The roughness isn't completely gone, but it makes it so much less visible. I actually quite liked the appearance of the model with just this paint, but my son wanted some colour, so here's how I addressed that. For some of the stronger details, I used Sharpies to draw onto the surface of the paint, building up a few layers to give a uniform colour. For the green of the armour, I had some lime green fabric paint that I painted onto the surface. I thought this effect was much too strong, so again I got some clean paper towel and removed most of the wet paint, which left a kind of tinted appearance. The finished result still has some obvious texture, but I'm going to call those battle scars and in line with the character. When we inspect the top of the helmet and the shoulders, we can see that the very obvious layer lines from the shallow surfaces are completely missing. I'm really happy with the subtle green tinge on the armour, and most importantly, my son absolutely loves it. So overall, I'm going to call this project a success. Let's put my ability aside and evaluate the product. Firstly, the Ultimate Starter Kit comes with everything you need to get going, as you would hope. This includes some necessary safety equipment. The consistency of the putty makes it easy to work with, it's thick enough to hold its shape, but thin enough to be able to be spread easily. And this can be done using a variety of methods, such as with the provided spatulas that were a little too big for my objects. Needing to use gloves is a little inconvenient, as other putties are safe to touch, but apart from this, Incredifil is quite accommodating. For instance, you can leave the lid off and the brush out without ever worrying about the putty setting. And when you do want to cure it, the provided UV torch definitely does a good job. However, it's a little bit slow for my patience level, but that's largely irrelevant because you could also use a UV curing chamber intended for resin 3D prints or simply utilize a UV light that comes from the sun. I did notice after curing that the surface was still tacky and that's because it still needs to be wiped with IPA to address this. Once you do get to sanding, Incredifil is soft enough to use with regular sandpaper, but firm enough to use a file or a blade if necessary. And unlike for instance wood putty that I've used before, you can wet sand Incredifil without it breaking apart. Ultimately for me, Incredifil passes my test because it works as advertised. You'll be able to remove layer lines and other imperfections, and you'll most likely do a much better job than I did. It's also worth noting that while I used FDM printing with PLA, Incredifil is also suitable for post-processing resin printed models and should be helpful for cleaning up where support structures have been removed. In fact, it not only works on plastics, but also glass and metal. I think what I like best about Incredifil is the control. The putty won't set until you want it to. You can leave it out with the lid off and take your time, not worrying about a two-part mix setting before you're ready or needing to add water to get the right consistency. Did I mention I hate sanding? which is why you don't really see projects like this very often on the channel. But even with this obstacle, hopefully I've demonstrated enough for you to see how Incredifil works as an option. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.